I grew up in Bompton, down the street from looters. Grew up with a Mac, I ain't talking no computers. Swerving down Rosecrans, watch out maneuver. Hanging out the colors, red rag and the Ruger. Anyway, let me say this though. Ten years ago, if you'd have asked me to do this interview, I would have came in here saying, Sue Woo, what's up, blood? But no, that's not me no more. But I will talk about it, you know. Uh, I, my life is completely different now. I let the devil hand go. My mom was a dead mother. So she knew most of the boys on the streets because they came to our house for their den meetings. Parents were involved in the school. They were inside of the PTA. They were there as noon age when you go to lunch. So they knew, every kid knew every family on the street. And that made a big difference when you learned your neighbors. Black people, when you get us all together, everybody don't just get along, you know, so there was fights, but more or the less, uh, you would fight and still be friends as opposed to today. You know, you fight, uh, guys may go get a 40, so old English kick back on the grass, fight over with, somebody may have a busted lip or whatever. You could accept a, a butt whooping more then as opposed to now, you know. I got pictures of uh, the, uh, the mob, uh, Treetop for everybody. I got pictures of everybody at that park where we had some of the biggest picnics. Um, we would used, we would used to uh, get skates. We would skate over to the west side. You know, as I stated, I lived in the mob, so everybody was over at my house. You know, my apartment and the my uh, Hollywood. Some of them I got family from some of them places. You know, I got history uh, with with everybody from all them neighborhoods. You know. Um, you know, it goes, for me it goes way back, the history is deep, you know. Uh. I think by the time I was like seven, we noticed the neighborhood became predominantly black. More of the Caucasian neighbors started moving out of the neighborhood as they realized that the houses were abandoned and more African American families were moving in. It was like a segregation flight at that point for the Caucasians. There were a lot of white folks. There were only like five black families that lived in the neighborhood that I recall up until I was about seven years old. Most of those were considered middle class communities because we had the sheriff that lived across the street from us. We had the owner of a company that lived next door to us. But we all played together as families and everybody took care of everybody else. It's, it was just different as being a Pyro as opposed to just growing up in Compton. We was in different neighborhoods, different communities. We was everywhere. We went to a lot of blood neighborhoods. We was in Inglewood. We was in, um, we was everywhere. We was in the Pueblos. We was we was everywhere. Everywhere that was blood that, uh, running with my brother. Mostly I was running with my brother. We was undefeated as far as I'm concerned. We was everywhere. You know, doing you know, doing what you do. You know, we went somewhere and uh, somebody said something we didn't like. We fought. You know, uh, you know, it's made the best man win. Back then, uh, I didn't, me myself, didn't care about taking a uh, a butt whooping or, or nobody else. You know, we had again, we had more fighting than you do uh, killing now. You know, it's a, it's a bunch of cowards out here today. <laughs> You know, so we did more fighting, uh, you know. In 1993, 20 years after the blood gangs aligned and became as one, there were isolated issues and beefs that began. Bloods began to hunt and kill other bloods. For the city of Compton, it was late 1996 and tension started to flare. By the early part of 1997, Lutus Park and the Ma Piru separated. A bloody war ensued and neither side can claim victory. Uh, for me, I think it was like in the 80s when, when you know, when power was branched off, um, when the younger guys started saying, you know, Elm Street, Mob, uh, Holly, Lime, uh, Treetop, Fruit Town, um, you know, all the different neighborhoods. Um, I believe in the 80s was when they branched off from being just uh, Pyro or Luther's Park, East Side, you know. It was on, uh, when I was growing up, it was the West Side and it was the East Side, you know. Uh, and, and for me, it's, it's always been like that uh, because I practically got along with everybody anyway, you know. The major influence, I would say, was the West Side that came over there, but 
you know, uh, we had more people, so that's why they came over there. They had some riders, trust me, they did, but we just had more. So the west side came to the east side and Lutus Park, you know, uh, Bob Louie came, uh, had a record high, Bob Louie came, then the next day or the next two days, like all of them came over there. You know, Puddin' didn't come at that time. All we did was hear about uh, Puddin', you know, uh, it was so many of us, you know, we was we were everywhere, you know, picnics, parks or whatever. And it mostly was cool, you know, it wasn't a whole lot of fighting, you know, they wasn't doing a lot of, a lot of fighting then. It was fights, but not a lot of fights. You know, we was going everywhere, and, and we was even going somewhere we, didn't, we wasn't supposed to be. You know, we was in Long Beach. <laughs> we was in a lot of different places, you know. We was just going a lot of different places. It was, I, I, I think we felt like we can go wherever we wanted to go. Uh, for the out-of-towners and the inner-towners that want to claim anything, I would tell them that it's Thuvo. It's over. You know, you didn't make it in the 70s and the 80s. It's over. Death Row Records was enjoying financial success in the early 1990s, but one of the founders, Marion Suge Knight, was embroiled in controversies, lawsuits, and major violence. That violence came back like a boomerang and had an influence on the streets of Compton. Uh, before Death Row came, Lutus Park and the Mob was Lutus Park Mob. Then Death Row came. Then <laughs> it was, after that, it, it, it was haywire. Death Row came and it's Death Row. I grew up in Bompton, down the street from Looters. Grew up with a Mac, I ain't talking no computers. Swerving down Rosecrans, watch out maneuver. Hanging out the colors, red rag and the Ruger. My mama house in Santana, G-Moms and Hoover. Fuck my mama bitch.